Ordo Historia Introduction Book 1 The Lemurian calendar is given such that The astrological labels on the Lemurian calendar signify 2,000 year long aeons of solar precession counterclockwise through the signs of the zodiac as they occur for sunrise on the spring equinox. Positive 2000 year Pythagoras, the present, is positioned at 5 o'clock on the Lemurian calendar round. Book 2 The understanding of the Lemurian calendar is such. The current Pythagorean order of death possesses historical records only as far back as 19,000 years ago, around negative 17,000 year Pythagoras. This date is represented on the Lemurian calendar at 230. However, from our present position at 5 o'clock, we are capable of predicting ahead by 5,000 years to positive 7,000 year Pythagoras when the Earth and Sun relative to galactic core will be in the same position in their cyclical orbits as they were one complete circuit before when the historical records of our present order originate i.e. at the position of 230 on the Lemurian calendar. So, to chronicle our history, we can begin 19,000 years ago, when the magnetically attractive pole was still in the Antarctic Hemisphere, and there were glaciers covering most of America. This was, according to the historical records of the Pythagorean Order, when the law was originally brought to Earth from Nibiru. We call this time period the Epoch of Atlantis. However, the reign of the Atlanteans declined quickly after the oldest records of our current order, and we have little further records describing the origins of our law. However, we do know that Atlantis aspired to be a democracy, as we have ample, albeit posthumous, proof of their applications of political structure to natural shapes and cycles. However, 12,000 years ago, negative 10,000 year Pythagoras, or 11 o'clock Lemurian time, there was a flood in Antarctica that destroyed the last of Atlantean civilization and forced the final survivors to migrate towards the new magnetically attractive pole via the peninsula then connecting Antarctica and Africa. This first wave of Atlanteans to migrate into Africa either cloned Australopithecine protohominids, such as the Lucy skeleton, or, more likely, were this species themselves. The truth on this matter is occult, because only the Neanderthal version of the mythology survived the flood of Mesopotamia some 6,000 years ago, negative 4,000 year Pythagoras, or 8 o'clock Lemurian. The time period between the flood that swept away Atlantis in Antarctica and the flood that swept over Mesopotamia 6,000 years later was the epoch of Lemuria. During this time, the northward migrating Australopithecines first encountered southward migrating Paranthropus in the region of sub-Saharan Africa. Either by cloning or interbreeding, the Australopithecines and Paranthropus combined to produce three new species. One of them, the Neanderthals, was killed off almost immediately. The other two were Homo sapiens and Cro-Magnons. By the time of the flood in Mesopotamia and the end of the Lemurian epoch, Australopithecines and Paranthropus had also died out, and there is no subsequent record that the Cro-Magnon survived. 
According to the mythologies recording the existence of these epochs prior to the supposed beginning of our current civilization, the Australopithecine species is known as Adam and the Paranthropus species as Eve. Their three offspring species were Cain, Cro-Magnon, Abel, Neanderthal, and Seth, Homo sapiens. We learn from this that the lifespan of Australopithecines and Paranthropus was much longer than their subsequent offspring species. The Neanderthals, we learn further, inherited long life with Cro-Magnons, but Homo sapiens inherited our greater capacity for intelligence from Australopithecines, the progeny species of Atlantean Antarctica. We learn also that Neanderthals were not truly the offspring of Australopithecines and Paranthropus, but were a progeny of Homo sapiens and Cro-Magnon. At the time of the crossing of each of these species to produce new subspecies, there arose an empire from a small inbreeding group. 4,000 years ago, following the flood of Lemurian Mesopotamia, the three primary centers for these imperial clans were in the Indus, Nile, Tigris, and Euphrates river valleys across what we now call the Fertile Crescent. This was the period of time at the beginning of our modern civilization's records of history, and since then we have become less and less mythological in our historical records keeping. By now, the times of the negative magnetic pole being in Antarctica are almost over. The aeonic season of spring breaks apart the glaciers covering old Atlantis and our pre-Australopithecine origins. By the middle of the summer season of the aeons in Antarctica, much of Asia will have begun freezing over. In another 8,000 years from now, Earth's magnetic poles will reverse north-south, positive-negative again. In Atlantis, everyone knew and understood all of this in depth and vivid detail. By the Lemurian epoch, the wisdom of it had begun to fade. By now, all of the original Atlantean calendar system that remains is the zodiac and its application to the solar aeons rather than the lunar months is unknown to almost all of us. Thus, we can determine that our originally high level of civilization and desire for democracy degenerates over time. The result of this was the formation of churches last aeon to form the present system of government which we call within the order of death a papal republic. It should be expressly differentiated, however, the current office of Pope in the Universal Christ Church is not the equivalent for the order of death now, as was the Lemurian Pope for the Atlantean Senate on the opposite end of the Aeonic Cycle. Likewise, the forms of government we have now are quite unlike those we had at the time of the Antarctic Flood from the melting glaciers over America at 11 o'clock Lemurian time. But nonetheless, we are on the rebound from the furthest point away from that time on the aeonic cycle, and this means our forms of government are now advancing ever further toward regaining their original Atlantean ideals. To this extent, we can see the mechanisms of our liberation are necessarily growing more rapidly than the mechanisms of our oppression can counter. Just as when Atlantis was flooded, we lost an unknown level of highly technologically advanced civilization. Here now, on the opposite end of the Aeonic Cycle, we have developed an extremely highly advanced level of technological civilization in an incredibly short period of time. Since the end of the Kali Yuga, in positive 1600 year Pythagoras. The heroes of Atlantis elevated to the status of demigods in Lemuria, have, 
since the flood in Mesopotamia, become ever more vilified in favor of monotheistic cults. However, insofar as these churches have not yet unified, they actually represent a denigration from the unifying hero worship practiced among the last Lemurians. Only by a resurgence and uncovering of long-buried and thought-lost reasons for the atheist deism among the original heroes of times too old to recollect until now, can we unify the mythologies kept apart among modern cults and thus understand the actual events of our history, a treasure too great for most yet to even imagine. So long as the cults can stay divided amongst themselves, they can divide the people against one another, maintaining the confusion of tongues, and thus continually conquer our capacity for collective consciousness. The solar cult dictates their hours to its slaves, and so half the world works while the other half is asleep. In this way, no mind escapes the watchful eye of the pharaonic solar god, subject of the various cults' alleged monotheism. These heroes, considered as alien to our pantheistic cult followers in Lemuria, as would the pantheons of these elder cults be considered by the modern monotheist cults today, dwelt in Antarctica, and, so long as that seventh continent remains buried by glaciers of ice, we cannot confirm they ever even existed, and, as I said before, the only mythologies describing them to survive the Mesopotamian flood are those of the antediluvial pantheist cults of Lemuria, i.e. those of the Neanderthal, which describe the Antarctic Atlanteans as Titans or Anunnaki. However, as I have said also, because the flood that destroyed Atlantis occurred suddenly, so too does it now rapidly rise again from the depths of death. The mechanisms of oppression used to divide the mind of mankind against itself are failing, and the very chains they cast about to bind our bodies become the wires our souls escape through. Yet even as light begins to dawn across the undiscovered country, those torchbearers we depended on by dark of night remain, though only those willing to part with their positions at this point remain fit to follow, while all the rest who claim we maintain their needs should suffer their throats to be slit in their sleep, for such they would continually do to the true, all-seeing eye of the one awakened mind of all mankind. The cults, or rather, the churches in the East and the West, the triple Judeo-Christian Muslim religion of modern Mesopotamia, Europe, and the West, the religions of Asia, Hindu, Krishna, and Buddhist, Jain and Shinto, Sikhism and Zoroastrianism, the religions of North and South America, and the religions of Aboriginal Australia, and African voodoo will continue to struggle amongst one another for dominance until there are only four major world religions. After this, the Lemurian calendar records, will follow the aeon of the Twelve Anunnaki, ruled over by a sign not seen upon the face of earth since the beginning of the historical records of the Order of Death, when the law was first passed down from Nibiru, at 2.30 Lemurian time.